Hey everyone and welcome to my brand new series, Gemini Makes Games. So since this is the first season and the first episode of the first season, let's go over some basics about what this show's about. First of all, GMG is not a tutorial series. If you look online for videos about making games, you're mostly going to find stuff that are either tutorials about specific topics or behind the scenes about very specific things or just like general things, you generally don't see videos that follow a game through from beginning to end, which is what this series is about. What we're going to be doing every season is basically showing the entire process of making a game, going from just a blank design document all the way to a finished piece of software intended for sale on digital distribution services. Next thing to mention is that all the games that I make for this series are going to be done with the Godot engine. And this is specifically to save time because I can make game engines. It's just making an engine as opposed to using a pre-existing engine pretty much doubles your development time. So going with one that already exists will make sure that these episodes come out really quickly and that it's a lot easier to follow along with what's going on. Next, each GMG video is only going to be about 8 to 12 minutes long, sometimes a little shorter than that even. The thing is that we're going to be going over all kinds of different topics going forwards. Things like doing the design work and coming up with conceptual screenshots, doing the code, doing the graphics. Like All of this stuff takes time and there's not always going to be a lot to say about them. So rather than having you sit at, staring at a blank screen for like, an hour on end, I'd rather just shorten it down to just key things that are interesting. And last thing to mention is that all of the assets that are presented here are still held under my own copyright. So things like stories, artwork, music, sound effects, any of that stuff, that's still under copyright, which means you can't use it for your own games. Now, mechanics don't fall under copyright. So if you want to make a game that's similar to what I'm making, you're more than welcome to do that. You just can't use any of the same art or anything like that. Now, pretty much every game that I develop always starts off in one of two ways, either as a conceptual screenshot, which I like to call a concept shot, which I draw up in an art program, or as a design document that starts off as just a blank page in my word pro <laughs> yeah, word perfect nine. <laughs> this the program is 17 years old and yet it still works even on my Windows 10 system. So why change? It does everything I need it to do. But basically, whenever I start a design document, in this case for our new game, Luminous, I like to give sort of a description of what the game's going to be about in its most basic form and talk about the very specific things that are going to make it interesting. Now, the reason I chose the name Luminous has to do with the kind of graphical style I'm going for. See, I actually do have a concept shot I made many years ago for an idea similar to what we're going to be putting together for this season. And as you can see from this concept shot, it's a lot of glowing shapes and a lot of sort of single color vector shapes, but they're solidly filled as opposed to going for a wireframe approach. So this is the kind of style we're aiming for. What I want to make is not going to look like this exactly, but there's going to be similarities. So the name Luminous comes primarily from a sort of notion of illumination or things that are illuminated and just going with that sort of style with the look, everything sort of having that bright glowiness to it. But I also wanted to make sure that the name was a single word because we're going for a Galaga type game, i.e. a 2D shooter that takes place on a single screen. Now, unlike Galaga, you're going to be able to move all over the screen. And more importantly, this game's going to basically revolve around a particular gimmick. Now that's something, being a solo programmer, I don't really have huge amounts of time to invest into games that have all of these kinds of features and everything, like some people do, and some people put together some amazing things. But for the most part, whenever I'm making a game, I want to make sure there's one little thing about it that sets it apart from other games that are out there. And in this case, that one little gimmick that this game is going to have is that you can actually choose your mechanics. As opposed to, you know, how a game will have certain mechanics for how their weapons work or for how their shield systems work or something, you're actually going to be able to select different mechanics for those aspects based on what ship you choose. And there's going to be a pair of different mechanics for each of the weapons, the shield systems, and the power-ups you can get. I'm also intending to put a password system into the game. Now, this may seem a little 
backwards, given the fact that we live in a day and age where there's no reason not to use saves. But the reason I want a password system is because, first of all, we're going for an arcade style shooter. So there's not really much of a point to having a save system. But the other thing, too, is that I want to make it possible to hack the passwords. So I'm actually going to be able to demonstrate to you guys how a password system even works for a game like this. And then that, in turn, should make it possible for people to come up with their own passwords to be able to set themselves up however they want to. But it should be interesting to see how that plays out. The other thing we're going to quickly go over today is the very next thing I put together whenever I'm coming up with a game idea, and that's the controls. I know it seems a little backwards to try and come up with the controls, like the first thing, like really when you're coming up with a game idea, but there's a very specific reason why I do this. And that's because controls really can make or break your game. You could have this extremely solid idea for a game, but if you pick up a controller and you try to like fake playing it, like in your mind or something, and it doesn't control well, then it's not going to play well. Like, it's that simple, really. So I, the reason I like to come up with the controls so early in the design is because it sort of dictates how the game is going to play out. Because I want to make sure that I'm not over de over designing in a sense. I want to know what my controls are going to be like so that I have an idea of what aspects I should be designing into the game. So to that end, because we're doing a 2D shooter that's sort of like Galaga, that means using the mouse for movement is a potential sticking point here. And I decided against having mouse controls. The simple reason is you can use the mouse for 2D shooter type games. Hell, Tyrion 2000 is one such game that allows you to use the mouse to control your ship. But this can create balancing issues. And this isn't exactly something I was prepared to deal with since all of the ships in this game are gonna move at the same speed. So being able to override that, I didn't feel worked out so well for this design. So instead, the controls are going to be limited to keyboards and controllers using XBIT input, such as 360 controllers and Xbox One controllers. So I came up with my controls based around that. And as you can see from what I came up with here, the controls really aren't that complicated. I mean, it looks a little complicated just reading it here, but you got to remember, I'm trying to keep in mind like right-handed and left-handed people, people who want to use the analog versus the D-pad. So it's really not that bad when it comes down to it. And the other thing you'll probably notice is that I'm actually separating the gameplay controls from the user interface controls. This is actually a common thing to do when you're making a game is to have your controls sort of split up into different parts of the program so that you're not having to overlap the controls with each other. And this can be a little tricky to deal with when you're dealing with customizable controls, but it's ultimately not that bad if you do it right. 